Don't take money, don't take fame. Don't need a credit card to ride this train. The stars or something, something can be cruel sometimes, but it might just save your life. That's the power of love. -na 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 -na. I suck at singing. <laughs> Second Moments of Me here to do another video, uh, really not just another vlog because today is a very special day. It's Back to the Future Day or otherwise known as October 21st, 2015 or uh, most widely known as the day Marty McFly came back to the future and back to the future too. Now the reason why I want to do this video is basically to tell you, you know, the history I had with Back to the Future, how I discovered how it's had an impact on my life and, you know, just an excuse to make a video about Back to the Future because it's Back to the fucking Future. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, and it's it's top five easily. Um, my favorite movie out of the bunch is easily Back to the Future too. Even though I have a really weird order that people would kill me, for me the order is Back to the Future two, Back to the Future three, and Back to the Future one. A lot of people, a lot of people fucking hate me for that. Like, how could you put three over one and like? I, cause I actually like a good western, so fuck you, I guess, or fuck me, whatever, but Back to the Future has had such a big impact on my life, and I wanted to share with you guys of what exactly it's, you know, how it's impacted my life and how, and what it means to me. Um, I first discovered Back to the Future when I was about six or seven years old, uh, I was still in elementary school, and I was basically, uh, home alone because of my mom and uh, the rest of my family had to work and I was mostly at home you know after I get homework I would watch television and I just randomly found it scrolling through TV watching uh, looking for something to watch and there it was it was back to the future one um, and it, it was in the part where um, where Marty was in the enchantment under the sea school dance playing Johnny be good I'm like what is this and so I, I I, I watched the rest of the movie. I didn't really get it that time because I only caught the latter end of the movie. And but after but after that, I sort of looked more into it. Like I tried to see if the channel was passing it again or like maybe other Back to the Future movies. Like I asked about like, uh, what's this movie about the guy with the with the guitar and the Johnny Be Good and the yeah that sort of thing. And um, I, I eventually found it. I watched all back to I I got so lucky because the week after that uh, they were having a back to the future marathon they were passing all three films so i watched all of them and i loved every single one of them and it's just it's, it's just a really well-made film and i really like what robert zemeckis the director did uh with the entire thing the amount of detail the the character development the plots the atmosphere the world has so much detail so much life and it's like it's almost like a cartoon but in live action almost it's like the characters are so real and cartoony, even though it's it's uh, it's set in the 80s, that um, that it has so much life. It just has so much detail, so much so much life injected into it. And I love, the, especially the color, it, especially in uh, Back to the Future 2 when Marty goes back to the future. There's so much color, especially well mainly because it, it was the 80s and people in the 80s, especially when it came to clothes, love using vibrant colors like the yellows and the pinks and the greens and uh, the blues and it was just like, I just loved it, like it wasn't like gray all the time if you know what I mean because if you if you watch a movie nowadays, most of the color scheme is just grays and blacks and very very dark blues and whites and all of that stuff like just the look of the film and what Back to the Future did was it added color because if you do a movie in the 80s or any other time period, you have to go crazy with the color, and it's so weird. Um, I don't know why. I don't know. Why I'm such a freak about that, but I'm, I'm a huge film nerd, so that uh, I just like that kind of stuff. But yeah, uh, getting back to the characters, the characters are like they make the movie. I mean, Doc, Marty, um, Biff, one of the most hilarious and like most sinister villains of all time, and. You have the side characters, of course, Marty's family, um, and I just like 
Uh, basically, the main two are Doc, are Doc and Marty, of course. Doc played by Christopher Lloyd and Marty played by Michael J. Fox. And my favorite character has to be Marty because, don't get me wrong, I love the Doc. He's so fun. Um, Christopher Lloyd's uh, uh, Christopher Lloyd's Doc is like one of the most like if you if you if I tell you. Hey, uh, tell me the name of a famous movie doctor. You're gonna say Doc from Back to the Future. I mean, you're not gonna say fucking, uh, <laughs> um, you're not gonna say fucking, what's his face? I can't even remember the movie now. See, that's, that's what I meant. That's the one you always go to. <laughs> Mostly because I couldn't think of another example, but whatever. Moving on. Uh, Marty McFly, he's just so, Michael J. Fox's performance as, as Marty McFly is so good. He's like the relatable, like, 80s teen, like, oh, I, I'm i late, I'm late to school, uh, I write skateboards, I fucking have an 80s band that I do shitty covers of, <laughs> and I have, I have a girlfriend, I'm a slacker, blah, like, yeah, I'm a badass, and like, oh, and my, my friend just happens to be an old scientist who built a fucking time machine, Marty, <laughs> to me, I, I wanted to be Marty McFly, as you can see, I failed, <laughs> But Marty McFly was such a cool character, especially the way he dressed. Like, you go to any con, you're, you're gonna see at least 10 to 15 Marty McFly cosplays. And to follow that, about 50 Doc Browns and about two or five Biff Tannins. Back to the Future is fucking crazy popular, especially among, amongst nerds like me. And when you go to cons, like, I went to Phoenix Comic Con the past four years, and they've always had a They've always had a DeLorean setup where you can take pictures and go into DeLorean and all this stuff and like for four years or it might have been longer because I didn't I didn't start going until four years prior so it could have been there for longer but not even another move uh, another movie's not coming out or a game or a comic or something like that and they just have it there because it just had an impact on it kind of changed the game for imagination especially Back to the Future 2 with all the tech it introduced like um power laces, uh, uh, the hoverboards, flying cars, uh, uh, the hyd the hydration, hydrating pizza, uh, oh my god, the basic, the Google Glass stuff, the, the kind of esque they have when they're eating around the, di the dinner table, um, <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff, like the self-drying and self-fitting jackets, like, I really hope we're close to that, and, cause, I just, I'm basically like every other stereotypical Back to the Future fan because I just want a hoverboard. Like, we almost have them now, but they're not exactly what we expect. And that's a... If you look at Back to the Future 2 and that scene where he goes to the future for the first time, he's like, oh my god, they have all this cool stuff. And you kind of say, hmm, how close did we get? We don't have flying cars, but we do... We're almost on the cusp of self-driving cars, so that kind of counts. Not really, but I'll give it a pass. Uh, uh, Nike are selling, uh, the self-lacing Nikes, but for a very, very hefty fucking price. Like, if you're rich, you can basically buy one, but other than that, no. Not, <laughs> I, at my salary? Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not getting those Nikes until I'm fucking 50, probably. And I already explained the hoverboard thing, like, basically out of every, everything that they showed in the scene, uh, in Back to the Future 2, the hoverboard is the thing that everyone's trying to get. Because, how cool is the fucking hoverboard? I mean, it's basically an alternative for a skateboard, except it's cooler. And I, and a lot of people's like, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like the design of the hoverboard because it's too girly and too pink. Like, what? Fuck you, it was meant to be, it's an 80s trope movie, of course the colors are gonna be dumb. I actually like the colors, I don't like, every time I go to a skateboard shop, it's the same fucking fun. Oh, I want a black skateboard with a skull on it that says fuck life and on it, like, no, make it colorful, Have, get creative with it, and I, I just really want a hoverboard if you can't tell, I, even though my fat ass couldn't take it, but fuck it, I just want a hoverboard, why? Because hoverboards are cool, <laughs> and... And now they and send and for celebration, uh, in celebration of uh, today, people have companies have been coming out with uh, Back to the Future commercials about stuff like uh, USA Today changed their font to the font that they had in the movie when he went to the future. I think that's amazing. Pepsi uh, came out with commercials for Pepsi Perfect, and they're actually selling Pepsi Perfect, but for twenty five dollars. 
I've already seen that shit on eBay going for about 500 grand. I'm like, 500 grand for a bottle, for a, a, a limited edition bottle of Pepsi. Yeah, I'm not gonna break my wallet for a bottle of Pepsi. <laughs> and, uh, and what else? I'm missing something. They released the, the, the fake trailer for Jaws 19, which is the fake movie that <laughs> that Marty saw the, the billboard for and had the hologram. That's another thing. We're almost close to holograms, but we're not like Star Wars close to it. Like, oh, Tyler's calling me on the hologram. Let me answer it. And he fucking shows up giving, giving me the middle finger. Like, I wish, but we don't. But yeah, the Jaws, <laughs> that Jaws 19 trailer is fucking hilarious. Like, I I just love what they're doing with it, they're just sort of rolling with the punches. I bet there's more stuff that I'm missing, but um, just seeing how much of, of an impact on one a series of movies have done, more specifically Back to the Future 2, has had on basically our lifestyle is fucking crazy. Like, I go to cons or I just go to a, a random store, you see uh, the hat Marty's son and he wore in Back to the Future 2 everywhere. My bad, everywhere, and like, in cons, and fucking, I, I think it's in Universal Studios, it's, it's everywhere, and, <laughs> and, um, it, it's, you see DeLoreans everywhere, just because, like, I think I saw one two weeks ago, and the license plate even said at a time, which I thought was fucking cool, it, I would, my secret car is a DeLorean, but the insurance, and the probability, and the handling of that thing would probably kill me, but whatever, but yeah, like, it's had such a big impact on everything, like, they still have screenings to this day, in fact, I believe AMC, or Harkins, I can't remember, is holding screenings for all three movies today, I made say, in theaters, which I don't have a ticket for, because I'm a broke-ass bitch, <laughs> oh, I fully had more money, they had Funko Pops, just posters, there was a video game by Telltale Games that was really, really good. Um, it's not as good as the others, but it's such a good... It could have been its own movie sequel and I would have accepted it. It was so good. Uh, and today they came out with a new comic run of Back to the Future that basically tells you how Doc met... Uh, Marty met Doc. But it kind of retcons it if you play the game. But, and it's timey-wimey, spacey-wacy stuff. I don't... It, Back to the Future, science, whatever. And... That also too, like the time, the time traveling uh, element. Like, how crazy would it be if, like, in real life we cracked time travel? But like, it would be crazy and scary at the same time because I believe that mankind cannot is not ready to handle time travel. We shouldn't be able to handle time travel. But in the movie, in movies, it looks fucking great, and it's crazy to see the consequences and sort of like what you can do with it. But in real life, I think I would be too scared to actually, you know. Be like, yeah, time travel, let's do it. Like, no, time travel scares the shit out of me. <laughs> to know someone's future and to have that information to some, and just maybe having the chance of it screwing it up or changing anything, like the whole butterfly effect thing, like, oh, a butterfly flaps its wings and a fucking tornado in Kansas showed up or something like that. Like, <laughs> it's the whole science behind time travel just scares me because, like, because it's, it's probably because it's it's a, it's a thing I have. It's just like it freaks me out. But in movies, I love it. I think it's the best thing ever. But if I ever had a DeLorean, I'm like, yeah, how about I don't fuck with time and the balance of nature? <laughs> but yeah, um, Back to the Future, uh, once again, fucking great, great movie. The music is amazing. Like, the, the, uh, the main... Um, Sorry, the main uh, orchestral theme, the da da da, is so good. I mean, you hear it almost everywhere. Like you hear, you go on YouTube right now. It's covered by almost everyone. There's rock covers, acapella covers. There's 8-bit covers. There's fucking dubstep covers. To my dismay, there's <laughs> there's country covers. Yes, there's a country cover of, of the Back to the Future theme. I I you don't believe me? Go, it's out there. It's out there somewhere. There's and, and especially like the theme song, uh, the the various artists that did music for this, like Huey Lewis in the News, uh, ZZ Top, and um, just like old school 80s to 90s bands, like they got ZZ Top to make a song for the for Back to the Future 3. 
<laughs> they got fucking ZZ Top, and then they have Huey Lewis in the news, which Power of Love is one of my favorite songs of all time. It's on my phone. I listen to it for shits and giggles. I posted, like, I think, like, two months ago, I posted a video on my Snapchat or on my Twitter, I don't remember, of, I just have the music video in the background, and I'm just like, just, just, just jam into it, because... Yeah, Huey Lewis and the News are kind of old school, but fuck you. Huey Lewis and the News is fucking great. I love old school music like that. Um, it's it's just so good on all fronts, and, you know, eh, the music is great, which I probably said a thousand times, but yeah. The thing, the thing with Back to the Future is that... I don't think there's ever gonna be another trilogy like it where it's 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 fan base is so strong. It's so strong. I go out to cons, I go out to screenings, and I see the hefty fan base. I go to I I go to Reddit, I go to Twitter, I go um I go to uh, I go to Tumblr. I see multiple multiple just uh, Reddit threads of uh, Back to the Future, like especially the science to it, the the costumes, the music, like oh, uh, even fan theories and stuff, like just the movie came out so long ago, and the the fan base is still thriving, and it's so cool to see a movie do that. Like it's like it's like you have those movies that affect people's lives. Like you you have your Back to the Futures, you have your Star Wars, you have your Harry Potter, you have your Star Trek. And to those franchises that just come out and and when they come out, people are like, oh, another time travel movie, or oh, another space movie, or oh, another whatever movie. And then to years later, when it's already come out, the fan base still being so passionate about it. I just love stuff like that, especially since I'm a passionate fan like that too about multiple things. And a lot of people know that I am. I'm very, very uh, vocal about my opinions when it comes to other stuff. And especially Back to the Future. I don't have, I have nothing but good things to say about Back to the Future. I, I don't have any problems with Back to the Future 2 or any of the movies for, for a matter of fact. I even love Back to the Future 3, which I don't know why people hate it so much. Back to the Future 3, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go on a manifesto, so if you don't want to listen to it, skip ahead. Um, Back to the Future 3 is not a science fiction movie. It's not a time travel movie. It is a Western. I want to clarify this. It is a fucking Western to its core. And I just, I thought, I think that's what Robert Zemeckis was going for. He wanted to make a Western. And he made a damn good Western. Uh, and I, I, I love Back to the Future 3, okay? It's a good movie. I don't know why people hate it. Like, it's definitely, it's it has its problems. Like, the, the pacing couldn't give, uh, could have been better. Um, uh, the pacing, uh, that's all I have. The pacing just could have been a lot better. That's all, that's all the only problem I have. And... Uh, yeah, Back to the Future 3 is still a good movie. Fuck, fuck you, haters. <laughs> but yeah, in, in Kukuni Thoughts, uh, Back to the Future, uh, it, it's, it's, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good! <laughs> um, if you haven't watched, uh, if you're watching this video and you haven't watched any of the Back to the Future movies, please do. You're doing yourself a, a disservice. Please watch the movies, they're amazing. Because Back to the Future 2 is the magnum opus. It's like the best sequel of of all time. It's up there with Empire Strikes Back, but that's a topic for another video. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna start a flame war today. That's the topic for another video. But yeah, Back to the Future, fucking great movie and such an impact on my life. Um, and I'm... Probably if I have kids, which I don't even know, <laughs> I will show them Back to the Future. It's on the list of movies that if I have kids, I will show them. Uh, it's up there with Star Wars and Harry Potter and the fucking a uh, whole uh, the James Bond movies, the Marvel movies. It's on it's on the list. Trust me. It's like Back to the Future Two is has made its impact in history, and it will not it will never fade. I, it's just one of those movies. Franchise, franchise that it's left its mark on everyone to where we can all agree to like oh yeah even if like there's new fans to it you can agree like yeah back to the future it's awesome and you know you can just come together and just love you know no matter what it is the the story the characters or the general feel it we can all come together as back to the future fans and just you know just fucking love it because it's it's so monumentally good so yeah, on that note, thanks for watching this video, guys. Uh, 
I hope it didn't go too long. I'm at the 20 minute mark. I'm probably going to do some heavy editing on this. But thanks for watching, guys. And I'll get some more videos out. Uh, just to let you know, I got my reaction to the Star Wars final trailer out for The Force Awakens. Uh, the reaction is out. It's on my channel. I will put the link to the the link my bad the link in the description below if you want to check that out i will get uh i'm hoping to make a lot more reactions because we still have one more batman v superman trailer and also the captain america civil war trailer i can't wait to react to that but in the meantime guys i will try to make more videos for you and hopefully the fucking i'm so glad i'm not fucking shaking the camera because the reason why the camera was shaking in the Star Wars video, Spencer, yeah, I'm calling you out, bro. It's because it was it was Star Wars. I was nervous and I was excited. Leave me alone, bro. But on that note, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.